I mean, we walked inside the Spurgeon's Tabernacle for 5,000 people like this great crowd tonight used to assemble every Lord's Day night and where the power and blessings of God were so obvious. We walked in that little that auditorium and cut down to 1,700 now. There are Spurgeon's bust out in the lobby. A great giant of God. You've heard me tell this story. I was talking to a man uh, out west, and he, preacher, he came to me and he said, Brother House, he said, I'm going to quit the ministry. I said, why? He said, my unmarried daughter is pregnant. And I said, no, you can't do it. He said, how can I walk in the pulpit next Sunday morning? How can I preach next Sunday? I said, here's how you do it. I said, the first thing you do Sunday morning is you get up. Second thing you do is you bathe. Third thing you do is you dress. Fourth thing you do is you eat. Fifth thing you do, you get in the car. Sixth thing you do, you come to church. Seventh thing you do, you sit up there behind the pulpit. The eighth thing you do, you stand up in the pulpit and you start preaching. I said, that's the way you do it. You just keep on doing it. I want to speak this morning both everlasting life and eternal life are gifts of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gifts of God are eternal life and everlasting life. You say, hold it, preacher. You said the gifts of everlasting life and eternal life? Yes. I said the gifts of everlasting life and eternal life. The gift of everlasting life and the gift of eternal life. There are two words in the Greek language. <clears throat> they are sometimes <clears throat> interchanged, but there are two words in the Greek language. One for eternal and the other for everlasting. Then what we know what everlasting life is, it endures forever. What then is eternal life? Just what is eternal life? May I say this, and if you listen very, very carefully, you'll get the picture. When a person receives Christ as his Savior, not when he joins the church, but when he, in believing faith, receives Christ as his Savior, God gives him immediately, and he is an immediate possessor of everlasting life. Now listen carefully. Though he has a gift of everlasting life, he does not necessarily possess eternal life. For everlasting life is a quantity of life. An eternal life is a quality of life. There's not one single cult, as we call cults, thing in our independent fundamental Baptist churches. If you walk with God as much as I do, and if you knew Him as well as I do, and if you got along with Him as much as I have, <laughs> you can tell Him a joke too.